IQ Season 3 Episode 5. I had a feeling, I had a feeling that that moment was connected to this, this event, this camp. All these coaches are so insightful. Oh, here we go, the genius thing. Yes, let's get into this. Let's do Kagama's journey too. While we're at it, let's give that coach a raise for just knowing his players so well. He really does his job. That's a man who likes high school volleyball. So he can't be a jerk, i.e. he can't play his hardest and expect his teammates to fill in the gaps in his expectations. And he can't be kind and work with his teammates because that makes him a goody two-shoes. I think the answer, I mean, way easier said than done, is you keep an open mind and you try to be self-aware about your own weaknesses so that you can grow, ways in which you're falling short. But overall and otherwise, you do what feels right and stop trying to please people. Okay, I almost gotta figure out what his game is. Who he is and how that plays into working with others. Because that's what it takes for success. Take it easy. Take it easy. Oh, he saw it. Damn. Watching him apologize is new too. Sets him up for the spike. I can't wait to see how this all comes together. All these various pathways of learning. Like he's always delivered on that front. Nice <laughs> Oh, wow, what a great setup. Such a good idea. They warned him. That was fast. That's pretty much the whole story. Man, that's a really charged dynamic. Not a beating Ushiwaka in the Nationals and then being his towel boy. Ushiwaka gives that impression, but I don't know. He feels approachable to me. Speaking of charged relationships. He also greatly admires him. That's really what it is. Shuak is a hero in his eyes. Heroes are hard to approach. Well, that stings. Wow, the drama in this episode is so great. This is all the things that have happened. All the people involved and their game history. Hinata truly does seem to have gotten a lot out of this camp. How about Kageyama? Interesting. Yeah, it's cool to see Kagama slam it. Kagama also has been shown to be really good at like getting into the zone. He has so many moments of like, I'm really feeling it today. <laughs> There's so many great coaches in this show. So many great characters. It's interesting that those comments seem to have some overlap with conclusions Hinata reached last episode in the advice he was giving to two meter tall guy. It's tough because I think all the players in this camp are potently aware of the fact that a lot of them aren't going to make it. Most of them will never win championships and a lot of them will see their careers end in high school, whereas a lot of them probably have pro ambitions. But I think 
one important thing to remember for them and just generally is that the stress itself is not useful. Anxiety or worry itself is not useful. I think how useful something is will be determined largely by what it leads to or the effects it has on a person. So if the anxiety leads to insight that leads to action that is positive or useful, then it's gone well, but still the worry, the fear, the tension itself did nothing. And even worse, it's often counterproductive because anxiety has a way of feeling like truth. Worry has a way of feeling like truth, but often it's just as inaccurate as false optimism. This might also tie into something else we've seen this season about not skipping steps. If you live in a state of anxiety for a long time, there's sometimes a temptation to go for a big win or something that is validating too quickly because it's painful to live in that state of apprehension. It's easy to want a quick win or something that confers some kind of status or affirmation that one belongs in a way that's counterproductive long run if it means skipping fundamentals. I feel like I see people do this in terms of how they spin things about their life. Like they'll be on a certain pathway or there are certain things they're working towards. They'll take a very small localized win and overplay its significance both to themselves and also in how they talk about it to others looking for that kind of validation and for me it's sometimes tough to know how to respond to that because you want to be encouraging but especially if it's in a field that you're in or a path you've traveled before you don't want to give too much affirmation for it because you realize or it feels to you that they perhaps are underestimating the depth of what they still have to do and that sometimes that's self validation seeking or that quick win seeking is masking the actual work they need to do to get there. To that extent, I think focusing on what really matters, which is their playing and maybe just through having a very present mindset and maybe even enjoying it would be more productive for, for a lot of people. <laughs> I'm just loving it. I don't know, Kageyama's got Hinata. It does do a lot to develop Kageyama's talent overall as a volleyball player. The fact that he can switch roles so effortlessly. <laughs> Meanwhile, the forgotten team. It's a big leap of faith letting their players go off to various camps. <laughs> that confidence. Oh, is this trash talk? Is this low key trash talk? But there's a lot to learn as a setter playing as a spiker as well. Why does everything you say feel, feel insulting in some way? I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> Honestly, I'm confused. Was he referring to Kageyama not letting loose, not enjoying himself? I mean, that would tie into other parts of this episode. Hopefully Kageyama got something out of that because I didn't. I didn't know how many people were in the room. This is also great pro training, right? Because they're going to be on teams with new players all the time, constantly changing, changing lineup in their careers. That's a skill. That just flew by. It went way better for Kagam than I thought it might. Kind of let like a pro. Thank you for sitting with me at lunch. That awkward feeling when you say goodbye to someone and then have to walk with them to the train and maybe take the train with them. You know you love it. Shut up. Sure, they're going to be delighted to exchange emails. Say it, say it. Wow. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't. Fighting is the, the lifeblood of a lot of the Carson players. 
またなおっ <laughs> the different ways people treat Hanada is so funny. Anybody who's played against them in tournament play respects them. Yes, tell, tell us who you are. Where are you now? Who are you, coach, and how do you feel? Yeah, that's what I was saying. He gave more than he took. A lot more. Huh, kind of ambiguous still. <laughs> Sounded nice. Sounds like he's relating to Hinata. Careful. Beware the oysters. Speaking of heart, I don't know, it sounds like recognition to me. Recognition of something that makes it not a great, but also ambiguity about how it will affect him. Or was it an admission or consideration of the fact that it was a negative thing for the coach himself? I want to believe, and I'm leaning towards the idea, that the coach was changed for the better by the Shiro Torizawa loss. But maybe not is just too, too close to home still. Can't let him play. Hopefully this is not the last we see of that coach because he's a really interesting character. There's a lot to explore with him still. Yo. Nothing has changed. I might have to change what I said last episode about Kageyama not having the spirit Hinata does, or not being as apparent to me. I think he's just quieter about it. He's got it in him too. I mean, he's, he's the same. They're the same. That's probably why they're so great together. What were they racing for this specific point? Is that how often they race? They just know the end point sexually? Oh, a little of this, a little of that. Handing out Patari sweat, picking up towels, or reminding people of their location. Big of him to admit that. He carries the bubble in his bag. Wow. How tall is he? Yep. Wonder if that's gonna be a thing. Get out of my lane. <laughs> oh no. Hey. Feels good to be back back home. Whoa. Hello. That was nice. A little bit of you're not the best, but you could you could be. Should be afraid. Should be very afraid. Guess who's going to be doing refreshing hill sprints this time? Ukai should probably pick a different punishment because I think Arsenal just likes doing them. Very interesting start to the season. I'm first surprised that it went so quickly. I thought there was going to be a lot more of that. I thought there was a lot more to do with it. The fact that they accomplished what they were going for with that camp makes me very curious what it's building towards. Also, I'd say one thing that was inaccurate for me is I expected Kageyama to struggle a lot more than he did. He just rose right to the challenge and killed it. I got to eat my words a little bit because I was expecting him to go through challenges of his own that mirrored Hinata's and I guess it did in some way but it was way more personality based and emotional than it was about his playing on the court though maybe one thing you can say is there's a lingering question for Kageyama after that training I'm not even sure exactly what the question is but there was some criticism about his disposition as a setter as opposed to his disposition as a spiker either way now it's going to be very interesting to see Hinata and Kageyama who had two very different experiences come back together again and also where they'll be in reference to the rest of the team that did not participate in camps. Suki also in the camps. This arc was the most first year heavy so far. First time being largely away from the upperclassmen. I feel like seeing them all play together will highlight exactly how much they've grown during their respective camps. Also a very ambiguous ending for coach. I still, like I said, I still don't know what to make of it. What to make of him, though I guess where I've settled with it is that the Shiro Torizawa loss was a good thing for him, and that he ultimately respects something about Hinata even if there's still bitterness there. I'm also cemented in my decision that Hinata crashing the camp was a good thing, largely because of how much he gave back, and how humbly he took 
the assignment as ball boy, not being overly demanding or mopey, using it to his advantage while contributing to the overall experience for everyone. As a total side note, just another thing about the coach that I've been thinking, just because I don't know if I'll ever see him again. A few videos back, I took a stab at explaining why his strategy for teams for winning is unsatisfying. And the more I think about it, the more I think this is actually not a criticism of him. Because as it was pointed out to me, he, he actually does do a lot for his players and he pushes them to succeed. He wants them to have elite careers and that's fine. I just think from a viewer's perspective, we tend to dislike things that feel undeserved or we like to have a narrative that is inspiring, which is why it's easy to gravitate towards rooting towards people like him or underdogs because we want there to be that underlying thing that connects us and also that helps us believe and I think that's actually correct I think there's something about that work ethic and that drive the deservedness that we're looking for that reflects some admirable traits and some truth about the world and one's potential but just from observation I was thinking about basketball players that are revered and the two biggest names that I could come up with both if I understand correctly have this kind of hustle mentality and are very famous for having great work eth ethic staying longer at practice than anyone else being very competitive refusing to lose and I think that coupled with their success and their their winning because it would be not as significant without the winning is what raises them to that elite greatest of all time most admired status on the flip side I can also think of one very famous currently playing superstar athlete that doesn't really have that image as far as I understand which is which doesn't mean that person does not work hard doesn't have great ethic or, or mentality it just means it's not as discussed or not as obvious in public sentiment and that player despite having a ton of wins and a ton of championships and arguably being the most dominant and winning player in this modern era of basketball isn't as well liked and if I had to take a guess at one of the reasons it would be the fact that it seems he just was kind of shoehorned in because he was a natu natural talent and was dominant from a young age and is just really good and really athletic and there's no narrative to make that appealing so my final assessment of the coach and his strategies is not that he's doing anything wrong, not that he's a bad coach, personal issues aside of, you know, having hangups about his height, etc. He might be a great guy and clearly does a lot for his players and wins championships, which is the point. So he's a great coach, right? But I think that's partly where that feeling of dissatisfaction comes from watching his strategy, especially when compared to Karasuno, which has that missing element of grit, dedication, hard work, adaptability, personality, spirit, emulatability, the ability to emulate as opposed to just being great.